Hey guys, it's Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist in the Seattle area. Welcome to my channel. Thank you guys for watching these long form videos as well as my shorts that I try to post every day, but long form videos still coming out every Saturday. Keeping up with that, I'm traveling the world and giving talks on social media. I'm actually expanding into the social media mentoring space. And if you are a healthcare professional watching these videos and you wanna get into social media, I think we definitely need more doctors involved, uh, present on social media to post credible content because there's so much misinformation on the internet, as you guys know. I want people out there who do not have access to doctors or who have access to doctors to make informed decisions, better decisions about their health so we can have better health outcomes and not have people go down the dark road of misinformation and get influenced and misled by the stuff that's out there. It's sad. So I want more doctors out there coming out with the course called the Sugai Academy. Stay tuned for that. And we're very close to a full launch. So today we're going to be talking about retinol, affordable retinols, but also retinols of splurge on because there's so many retinoids out there. Which ones would I recommend for a particular person? We're going to break down age and goals because we always wanna have goals in mind, skincare goals in mind when we go out and buy a product, right? So retinoids we love because it does a lot of magical things. It is almost too good to be true. And when you see things online that's too good to be true, it's usually not true. But in this case, retinoids are amazing. They work on hyperpigmentation, fine lines and wrinkles, pores, it keeps them clean. And it can also work on acne, especially adapalene, tretinoin, and tazeratine. So we'll be going over different retinoids and when I would recommend a certain retinoid for a particular person. Okay, so let's jump into it. First off, I have a lot of patients in their 30s and up who are asking about retinol, which one they should get into. And if you're a beginner and you want to not splurge because you're not sure if you can, one, stay consistent with it because you got to use it every other night to nightly for about four to six months to start seeing the benefits of the reduction in fine lines and wrinkles, you wanna make sure you're able to keep that up in your routine at bedtime, that's your evening routine. And then also too, can you tolerate a retinol? So I always say start with something that's gentle, you can get easily at your local store and you're not breaking the bank. So if you are 30 and up, you wanna look at a retinol for cosmetic reasons. I like Olay, and we talk about that a lot, retinol 24, that has niacinamide to help brighten the skin, helps regulate sebum production, has peptides in it. So peptides we all love because it helps with increasing collagen production, further works on fine lines and wrinkles. And you got a gentle retinol that's in a nice moisturizing cream. People don't like the jar uh, at times because when you open it, you're allowing oxygen to come in contact with the product. Could it decrease the potency? Maybe. And also fingers, so having your dirty fingers go in. So always making sure you wash your hands and you have clean hands before you get that pea size amount with your fingers, okay? If you're looking at an affordable cost, but you want a little bit more of a boost because you've tried the Olay, you're able to tolerate it and you want something uh, more substantial, Go with number sevens, pure retinol, 1%. So 1% is a great percentage to consider. You know, I always say for percentages, 0.25% and up is great for fine lines and wrinkles. And this is 1%. So I love that number seven has disclosed their percentage behind that one. It's great because it also has peptides. So we start really declining our collagen production at age 30. So getting in on the peptide gain to be a cell signal or increase collagen production is huge. Now in your mid 20s and up, you know what, you want something that's very affordable and gentle. Things that I started off with when I was in my mid 20s was rock. This was the first retinol that I ever tried. It was very affordable, no fragrance. They've done a great job with the retinol and I've enjoyed alternating retinol with my prescription tretinoin for myself personally, especially in the winter time when things start to get dry and sensitive on the face. I'm gonna use a retinol and Rock has always been one of my favorite OGs in my routine. Another one that's good if you have just like some hyperpigmentation and you want to help with those dark spots with the fine lines and wrinkles in your mid 20s and up. CeraVe is a nice gentle option with licorice root extract. You got niacinamide in this. Very affordable for the youngins. You can check these out at your local store. Great options there. Another great option that I've really enjoyed is Neutrogena's Rapid Wrinkle Repair Retinol. It could be fragrance or non-fragrance and very affordable. And they've even come with the Retinol Plus line that does disclose the retinol, whether it's a serum or the cream. So good job to Neutrogena for getting into the disclosure game and telling us what percent retinol you have in your products. Now, if you're a teenager and you wanna get into the anti-aging game, don't waste your money or your parents' money. You don't need a retinol, okay? Early 20s, I'd say also you don't need it. 
only consider a retinol if your dermatologist says you need it for acne and they'll usually prescribe you one or direct you in the right direction, which we'll jump into very soon in this video. But before we get into acne, let's talk about people who want to increase their retinol even further past the 1% retinol. Consider a retinaldehyde. If you wanna have a budget option but boost past retinol, retinaldehyde is technically more potent than retinol because it's further downstream. So retinol has to be converted twice to become retinoic acid, which is the active form that does all the magic. And I prescribe retinoic acid as tretinoin. If you have retinaldehyde, it's only one conversion step away from retinoic acid. So retinol becomes retinaldehyde, retinaldehyde becomes retinoic acid. And so retinaldehyde, it can be hard to make retinaldehyde. And so Naturium makes a good one that's very affordable. I love that their price point has always remained low and affordable. But another nice brand is Maylove. Maylove, they have made a great vitamin C serum called the Glow Maker. And the Moonlight Retinol Serum is a nice retinaldehyde product that is in a dropper bottle, fairly affordable. And they've done a great job with this. And just a few drops of face at bedtime and then apply your moisturizer over it. Great stuff. So consider that as studies have shown that it can help with fine lines and wrinkles even more so than retinol but it could be a little bit more irritating because it's more potent. Kind of like how tretinoin is much more potent, but it can be a lot more irritating than retinol. So there are trade-offs to it. Always start slow, maybe starting off like two to three times a week and then working your way up to every night slowly. But always moisturize after your retinol, whether it's a cream, a gel, a lotion, or a serum. And that's for any retinoid. Retinoid is the umbrella term of all the vitamin A derivatives. And then you have retinaldehyde, retinol, retinil, like retinol palmitate, and then you have the prescription retinoic acid, that's tretinoin, you have tazeratine, triferritine, another synthetic newer generation retinoid, and another synthetic retinoid that you might see over the counter is adapalene at 0.1% in the US, and that's made by Differin and La Roche-Posay. Let's talk about if you have acne, I would say go for adapalene. Don't go wasting your time with retinol, with retinol, retinaldehyde over the counter. They all bind to different nuclear receptors. And I believe adapalene is the best at treating acne like tretinoin. But tretinoin's prescription, if you have mild acne, you can start off with the over the counter option of Differin gel or La Roche-Posay Effaclar adapalene 0.1% gel. If you're going for Differin, get the 45 gram tube and not the 15 gram tube because it takes two to three months of consistent use before you see improvement. So you're gonna be on it for a while and apply those, you know, like any other retinoid, a pea-sized amount to your entire face. And you're not spot treating it to every single pimple on your face. You're treating the entire face because one, it's preventing acne from forming and two, it's treating the active lesions there. Help with whiteheads, blackheads, and inflamed papules, bumps, pustules, it'll help with all of those, but prevent as well. If you have acne, go for that instead of trying to rely on your retinol to do something. Like Olay is probably not nearly as good for acne as adapalene. But in terms of wrinkles, there's a lot of data backing up retinol for its wrinkle fighting abilities versus adapalene. We need to see more evidence behind that. So I'd say if for a cosmetic reason, go for retinol. If you are pregnant for any reason, do not use any type of retinoid, whether it's over the counter or prescription. Now, if you are gonna see your dermatologist, say me, tretinoin is the king, I would say, of all of the things, wrinkles, the pores, the acne, hyperpigmentation. So definitely talk to your dermatologist about tretinoin. Don't feel bad about bringing it up. Maybe bring it up in the beginning of the visit and not the very end so that your dermatologist can kind of formulate a plan on how to get everything covered in your visit because you don't want to be doing a skin check and at the end say, oh, by the way, can we talk about tretinoin? You might want to talk about that during the skin check and incorporate it into the visit smoothly. And so tretinoin is just great stuff. Hopefully insurance covers it, but if not, there are ways that we can prescribe to certain pharmacies that can give you a good cash price. But if you want something as close to tretinoin as much as possible that where you're not going in to see your doctor, you can get online, there's Skin Better Science. Alpha Rat. So Alpha Rat I've been talking about on the channel. It has nice packaging. You twist and one pump gives you that pea-sized amount and you have alpha hydroxy acids bound to their retinoid. It's not a true retinol, it's their own retinoid. If you're okay to splurge on something more powerful, they show that this is not inferior to tretinoin 0.025% prescription. I'll have a link down below on where you can get this, but this is 
great stuff. You get the exfoliative benefits of the AHAs, the alpha hydroxy acids, plus you get the magical benefits of having a retinoid. Blends together very well without the irritation. And I always say, if you don't have this, don't mix a leave-on exfoliant with your retinoid. Those are That's a big no-no. You can cleanse with an exfoliative wash like salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide before you apply a retinoid, but do not put a leave-on exfoliant with your retinoid at the same time, or even on the same day. If you're gonna exfoliate, maybe do that twice a week, and then the other days of the week, do your retinoid. Just check this one out if you're okay to splurge over 160 bucks, but you know, it'll last you a few months if you're using it every night. Times are hard right now and it can be quite expensive, and that's why I like to focus a lot of my time on the channel on affordable skincare. Hope this helps you decide when there's so many products out there that we talk about on social media. Hope this helps guide you on how to choose a retinol that might work for you, okay? But there is a trial and error part to this process, okay? So please hit the like button, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys for long form videos every Saturday. Take care and peace.